Well, welcome and God's peace to you. We gather on this winter's day, the sixth Sunday after the Feast of Epiphany. And it's a special day for us because we have a wonderful guest, our regional missionary from the South Central, for the South Central uh, region of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. We are so thrilled to have with us George Black to visit with us. And we can say, because we already heard it at 8 o'clock, a, fa a fantastic, sir, a convicting sermon. Good morning, church. My name is George Black. I am the South Central Region Missionary for the Episcopal Church here in Connecticut, and I am really happy to be with y'all. Let us pray. God, we thank you for right now, for these people, and for where we are today. And we thank you for the ways that you are calling us into the world. We ask, Lord, that you would give us the courage and the wisdom to lean into your calling, to hold it, and to not let go, even when your calling is pushing us to things we never knew would be required. In Jesus' name, amen. What if God is calling us to something more than mere compliance to a list of rules? What if God is calling us to more or avoiding harm? What if what is God is calling us to do is something far beyond what we ever thought would be required? I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, and for as much as the city has formed me and raised me and taught me about myself, especially when I was younger, I also experienced New Haven as a fairly violent place. I have lots of stories of people who have been hurt. I have seen a lot of people be hurt. But I was never one of the people who were hurt. That is until the day after I graduated from high school. Me and a few friends, my brother, and two of my friends decided we were going to go celebrate by playing some basketball at Gulf Street Park. And so we walked down to the park and ran into some young bloods, young men who wanted to be a part of a gang, who had to prove that they were tough enough to do that, and who decided that my brother and my friends and myself were going to be their ticket in. Interactions happened, an altercation, uh, sprung up. They asked us to move from the ball court that we were on to another court. We left. They followed us. And it became really clear that this was not going to end without a physical altercation. That altercation happened. We fought. And at the end, the boys threw out a threat. We're coming back for y'all. Watch your backs. We're coming back. This was the first day of that summer vacation. And it was the scariest summer of my life. Every time I went outside, I felt like my life was on the line. I feared for my physical safety. As the summer went by and many, many days went by that I didn't see these boys, my sense of safety kind of rose and I became a little more confident. And one day, the last day of summer, I went outside to go get me some Chinese food. Walked up the street, turned the corner, and there they were. Another altercation ensued. We fought again. And at the end of that fight, I remember going home, crying myself to sleep, waking up the next day and saying, I'm leaving New Haven, and I'm never coming back. Within a week, I had uh, applied and got into a very small no longer operational technical institute and had my uncle drive me 11 hours to Atlanta, Georgia. And I told myself that this was going to be home. I was not going back to New Haven. But God was requiring something different of me. One night, I was on the floor reading scripture, crying, feeling incredibly lonely. I had no community, no friends. And for the first time in my life, I heard or felt God speak to me. It was the closest thing to what I can call an audible voice. 
and God said, go back to New Haven. And I said, that is not happening. But thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> Next thing I remember, I was on my bed in the fetal position, rocking back and forth, and hearing God say, actually, you are going back because I've required something else of you. You have seen and experienced and interacted and been hurt by the kind of hurt that is happening in your city. The boys who hurt you that day are also hurting. And I am calling you to heal that hurt in your city. And I ask God, how could you require this of me? How could you ask me to do this? How could you ask me to go back and love folks who have hurt me, who have caused me pain, who have caused me harm, who made me fear for my life? This isn't fair. How could you require this of me? In today's gospel, we see Jesus requiring of us so much more than we thought was required so much more than our understanding of the law and of the scriptures often spread out. Jesus took four very well-known commandments, commandments that the people of those days would have known very well, and he expanded it. And he brought it to places that the people of that day wouldn't have liked. In many ways, he made those laws more difficult to follow. You have heard it said that you shall not murder. But I say that even if you are angry with someone, it is of the same judgment. You have heard it said you shall not commit adultery. But I say if you lust at someone in your mind, in your heart, it is the same thing. You have heard it said you shall not divorce. And if you do divorce, give a certificate of divorce. But I say don't divorce at all except for infidelity. You have heard it said, you shall keep all your promises. But I say, don't even make promises. Just say yes or no. Jesus is challenging our understanding of these laws here, of these commandments. He's saying, you thought you understood what was being said. But there is so much more being required of you. There is so much more that I'm asking of you. What if when we hear the commandment about anger, that we hear Jesus saying that even our emotions are to be given to him? That when we hear about lust, that we're to submit our desires to him? That when we hear the commandment about divorce, that we are to honor our commitments even when it's difficult or socially acceptable? When we hear about oaths, that we are to understand and be careful with the weight of giving our word, of making promises. So much so that in many cases, it may be better to not even give the oath or to give the promise. Jesus is calling us to something deeper, something more. One of my favorite scriptures is the story of the man who came to Jesus and said, should we pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus says, give me a coin. Whose face is on this coin? And the man says, Caesar's face is on the coin. And Jesus' response is, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. And so we have to ask the question, if the coin is Caesar's, and we know that because Caesar's image is on the coin, then where is God's image? The answer is on us. We bear God's image, and therefore we belong to God, all of us, every part of us, mind, body, and spirit. And God is requiring all of it every last part of it, the parts we are willing to give, the parts we want to hold on to, the parts that feel safe to release, the parts that make us 
deeply afraid to let go of. God is calling us to all of it. I came back to New Haven, and for the next 15 years of my life, I did, to the best of my ability, what I felt like God was calling me to, which looked like, felt like, doing work with young people. I was a youth worker and advocate in New Haven for 15 years. Before this, I was a supervisor of an educational nonprofit, uh, helping young people think through how they wanted to be in the world and learning the skills to do it. And now, I'm the region missionary for the South Central region of the Episcopal Diocese of Connecticut. And I still feel God calling me to love folks and be in relation with folks and ask folks about their stories, even when I feel like those people can hurt me. Even when I feel like those people may not have my best interest in heart. Even when I feel like there may be harm done. God is calling me to the type of vulnerability and relationship that may feel scary. And God is calling all of us to that level of relationship and vulnerability. So my question to you today, church, is where the place is where God feels like, if it, where it feels like God is calling you to something that you didn't know was required. That in your understanding of the law and the word, you didn't know God could possibly call you to that. Where is that place? And how can you give that place to God and walk in courage to do the work that God is calling us to do? Because the law is not just here to help us avoid evil, to avoid doing harm, to avoid doing the wrong thing. The law is here to help us do the right thing, to do good, to bring healing. Where is God calling you to that? And how can you submit that to God today? Amen.